Good morning, Colleen. Welcome back. Did you miss me? Yes is the answer. All right, this is the page I'm going to show you how to do today um, with acrylic paints and collage paper. I decided that I'm not going to reinvent the wheel on this Sunday and do something brand new because my brain is not geared up for it. And it's Sunday and I have been doing two live Facebooks a day since last Monday and I'm reaching the burnout stage of my creativity this week. Um, but that's fine. So I want to talk you through how to create something like this. What do we think about that? Let's turn the comments on. There we go. Oh, hey. Okay. Good morning, Tina, Susan, Debbie, Bev. Gee, it's early in Western Australia, isn't it, Bev? Oh, good morning, Vicky. Do you want a quick little flick through of my art journal? It's a hot mess and I'll never do it again. But there's all sorts of bits and pieces in here. I may have done one on my last one. Little flappy page. Little cut out page. Watercolours. Morning, Cora. That's using um, like rice paper, Stamperia rice paper. That's a little book. I love that page. I think my favorite thing about that page is the cat wearing glasses. This is a page that is available online to buy as a class, actually, guys, if you are interested in doing an online class with me. This one is called the, I think it's called Celebrate Home Class, and you can buy that online and learn how to put this page together, um, and you'll be added to a Facebook group. This is another one that I did online, um, and yeah, so you can get a bit of an idea on um, you can jump in and do an art journal class anytime. Okay, so this is the page I'm going to do, and I'm just going to talk you through that. So I'm using my Large Dilutions art journal, um, and I've covered this one with some fabric just because I can. Um, what do we got here? Let's start a new page. So the large dilutions journals are great because they are that really, really nice heavyweight paper. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to use the Dina Wakeley collage papers um, and I'm going to use a couple on this one. I, I'm going to use this one here and I'm going to use one of these. So when these are in the collage paper packs that you can get from Dina, they're quite inexpensive, excellent value for money. Um, because I'm in a Big Dilutions page, a Big Dilutions journal, uh, I'm going for the big one on this side and I might pop her down the bottom or maybe that one. So the reason I want to use this image, I'm going to put it on this side because she's looking that way. If I put it over here, it's kind of like a negative body language, <laughs> good morning, uh, a negative body language sort of thing. So it's really important to think about the composition of your pages as well. Um, because I'm just going to pop a little bit of white gesso down on, on the background where she's going to go to give her a white base. 
Um, I just want a little bit because I think that it looks a bit nicer than the ivory base. And when I stick it down in a moment, it's going to, um, cause it's going to be transparent. So I just want to give it a, a white base to work on. I'm using the Liquitex Basics Gesso. Uh, Liquitex are the company that founded Gesso. They are the one that started, that created the product to start with. Uh, and I'm gonna pop a little bit over here as well. Um, I'm using acrylic paint and I'm going to be using a dry brush te technique. So I'm not gonna to stress too much about um, gessoing my whole page. It's not necessary for what I'm doing today. So I'm using my catalyst tool to, to swipe that on to get something relatively even. Um, and I did, it doesn't need to be super thick, but it's just got to be on there. So for those of you just tuning in, I'm doing an art journal page using the Dina Wakeley collage papers. And you'll find those under the Dina Wakeley heading online. Um, she's got the new ones as well as there's a couple of older ones that I've got there as well. And you'll find this one in that set. And I love this because I don't have to know how to draw a face because that's not my thing. Um, I want to tear this off. I don't want to have it as sharp edges. Um, and I've just got a wet paintbrush and I'm just going to wet the area that I want to tear. This particular paper is fantastic for painting and collaging with, but it's bloody awful for tearing. It goes all the wrong way. So I'm just wetting it and then hopefully this will work. There we go. So it's just tearing down that damp tear line. And I'm going to incorporate it into my background. So I don't want a straight edge. And I'll do the same thing up on this side here. And I didn't do that properly and it's just revolting. Okay. So now I want to use my gel medium to stick this down. Uh, I'll do this before adding my, my colour. So I'm going to be using my, my go-to gel medium, which is the Chromacryl Impasto Gel Medium. And I like it because it's got a bit of body to it. So I'm just using a little wide brush here. And I'm going to put it down like that. It's not super thick but it's a really good coat of gel medium and it's going right down to the bottom, right off the edges. So gel medium is my adhesive. So I'm gonna pop that on right to the edge and it's gonna come off the bottom as well. So smoothing that out with my hand, first of all. Then just rubbing it with my finger to get any air bubbles out. And now I'm just going to make sure all of my edges are really, really stuck down. So gel medium is a really important tool when you are art journaling. It is something that is, is a necessity. Uh, it doesn't really matter what what style of gel medium, whether it be a soft matte medium or a, uh, a, a, a an impasto one like I'm using here, you just need a good quality matte medium. All right, so that has gone on there. I'm not gonna go over the top here. That's not required because I'm going to be using acrylic paint. And now I'm gonna choose, I might go with this girly here. So tearing her off and I'm going with this one because the way that she's facing and this is where this paper doesn't tear down that way very well so you just need to have a little bit more patience than apparently I've got this morning with it
If anybody has the magic trick for tearing the pa uh, paper, collage paper against the grain, I'm all ears. Against the fibers more than anything. Got it. And I'll do the same thing. So how's everybody's Sunday morning going? Is anyone doing anything exciting today? Gosh, that's full of bubbles. So because it's full of bubbles, I'm just going to push the air bubbles out with my brush and then polish off any excess gel medium so that it's not too thick. There we go. So with your um, brush, make sure that you wash it straight away because gel medium is a, an adhesive and a glue. You need to make sure that you don't leave any gel medium in your brush or it will set and it is useless. So what I tend to do while I'm creating and I don't have access to clean water is I'll take a baby wipe and just wrap it in a baby wipe. And that just keeps it damp until I can get to the water. You're hanging out with me today, Rebecca and Tina. Moving furniture. Oh, that sounds like fun. All right. So I'm finished with my gel medium. I don't need to use that again, so I'm going to pop that aside. Um, paint. So what I want to do in the background is I want to lay down, I want to dry brush on some colour. So what that means is I'm going to use a, a wide paintbrush, something like this, and I'm going to have handy some paper towel. And I need to make sure that my brush is dry. The reason I want my brush dry is because I don't want to be adding water to this project at all. The colours that I'm going to choose for my background, I'm going to mix it up a little bit, but I'm, the colours I'm going to stay away from are blues and greens. I want to add, I want to create background first with warm colours. So I'm going to use a combination of Dilutions paint and I'm just going to put a little bit on like this and and dry brush it. So that means I'm going to brush it around in vertical strokes until my brush is almost clean. See what I mean? And you don't need much paint. That's way too much paint. And I'm going to move around my, my two faces here, around my girls. So it's the pushing the paint up and back like that and not having big bold strokes. That is the key, okay? so that it allows for easy blending. Uh, Do you need some? No, I'm just trying to work out what colors I'm using. I'm having a, having a moment. So now I'm gonna pop a little orange on and I start with just a dribble. You don't need too much. When I'm putting the second color on, I'm gonna go in and layer the colors on top of each other and brush them into each other so what is really important is making sure that i am not mixing colors that are opposite on the color wheel i don't i would never add green to this while it now that i've started with orange because of course orange and green are opposite on the color wheel so they are going to make mud okay so you want to stick with colors that are going to work together, okay? That is how you get something visually pleasing. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm not getting a whole lot of strokes and I'm dry brushing and I'm cleaning off my brush on my page before I add my next color. So the Dilutions paint, paints are working quite well. I'm gonna pop a little fluoro in, hey? What do we reckon? A little, a little strawberry daiquiri for a Sunday morning. It's quite a bold color, but it's also a translucent color. So 
a less is best option. Start with that and you can see how transparent it is. And if you're not sure, don't put much on. You can always add it on. It's a lot harder to take it off. Or put a dob on your palette next to you and take it off of there. Just popping a little bit around the page. Peony blush. It's going to be the next one and I'm up to the point now where I don't want to put too much direct onto my page I'm going to work off my palette on the side here okay so when I'm layering the colors over the top now and I'm adding a new color I'm filling my gaps but I'm also brushing it in a vertical motion up into up into the previous colors and letting them overlap a little so that they are blending in quite nicely. In and around the girls, I'm still pushing that color around the collage paper, but I'm not going into the face too much, okay? Because I'm gonna be painting over the top and, and incorporating those colors into, because I still have to paint their faces and I need to add a little background, but this will give me a much nicer base to work with. So I'm just working on the background, not the final piece. So I don't want straight lines like this. So I need to blend that out while it's wet. And essentially I'm just feathering it out. And I'm not changing the direction of my strokes either. That's super important. Everything is vertical. All right, happy with that. Now, and you'll see that I'm building. I'm not going super, I'm going from light to dark rather than, rather than um, dark to light. Because it's, as we know, much easier to build color that way. Um, I tend to stay away from reds in a background because they can be just ridiculously overpowering. Um, but what I will do is I'm going to go for deeper pink. So I've got cherry pie here. And I'm also going to add in some of the Dina Wakeley Fuchsia because it's, it's a deeper colour to work with. But working on my, my palette here, rather than straight onto my page is going to give me more control and I can I can build that way. And you'll notice I haven't cleaned my brush once. That's because it's just not necessary. Every time I put paint on my page, because I'm dry brushing and I'm feathering and overlapping the colors, it's it's taking all the paint off. Okay? So using a nice soft brush that allows you to feather will make a huge difference. So this is the Large Dilutions journal that I'm working in. Um, this is my normal choice of art journal, the one that I normally use. Um, I'm as a as because I've got a scrapbooking background. I am much more confident working in a bigger journal than a smaller journal. It's taking me a really long time to get the hang of working in a in a small journal. Um, okay, so what I'm doing now with this really deep fuchsia, which is like super dark, is just continuing to layer, but layering over the other colours and spreading it out. 
it's a little bit more transparent when you're spreading it out with a dry brush. And it is working beautifully. And you can see I'm kind of mixing some of these colors together here, but I don't have any big blobs of color. They're really lovely blends. And that's what the dry brushing does. And because I'm working in a small in small areas at a time, if I mess up and put too much color on, I can just spread it with my finger in that same motion. with that so what I want to do now is I just want to go back and just layer on a little bit of yellow um, so I am going to rinse my brush otherwise I will end up with orange rather than yellow so while I'm rinsing like this is pretty much dry other than that that glass color that I put on um, and that is because we are not using I'm not using a wet brush so I'm really really using this paper towel to dry my brush off I'm too lazy to get another brush. I'd rather just use the same one. I'm going to crack out some Dina Wakefully lemon. So did anybody see my post last Friday about lemon Dina Wakefully paint? <laughs> For some bizarre reason, there is all of the suppliers at the moment, all of the, uh, a lot of other retailers, everybody seems to be sold out. Um, my number one main supplier, uh, the availability of Lemon Dina Wakely paint says availability unknown. So I accidentally over ordered a little while ago. So there, I, I have a ton of Lemon Dina Wakely paint in stock. So if you need Lemon Dina Wakely paint, I'm your girl. So the reason I've decided to go for lemon, it's just a little bit heavier bodied than the Dilutions one. And now because I'm feathering this lemon over the top, it's layering really, really nicely. Okay. And it's sitting on top of these other colours really well. Like that. So I'm just pushing it down over... Just a little bit over the face, not too much, because I want to, in a moment, I'm going to colour the face. And we're going to make that, uh, make these got these girls here nice and pretty. All right, loving it, I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna wipe off this before I add any more. Knowing when to stop is really important as well. When you can look at it and go, yeah, I like that. That's when you take away the um, temptation to add more. Would have been good if I put an apron on. Where's my apron? Okay, so that background is almost dry. So what I want to do next is I want to add, and when I compare it to the original page that I started with, which is this one here, I've created that background. I want to now colour my lady's face. What colours am I going to use? I'm going to pull out a few neutral tones. So I've got some white, some carnation, a little vanilla custard. A 
little blushing. Maybe not vanilla custard, maybe buff. That might be better. Okay. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to do here is just get get some paint on my palette. Um so that I can build my own colors, okay? Um, the brush I need to use has got to be a lot smaller and maybe cleaner than what I've got here. Having a couple of different widths of brush handy can uh, certainly benefit you. That'll do. Oh, here's the other one. That could be cleaner. All right, um, one face at a time. So I'm going to start off with a bit of white and I'm going to do a, you need to work while the paint is wet as well. That's really important. Um, working while the face is wet is going to allow you to move the paint around a lot more. And I might just do a little tiny bit of fuchsia here. Um, I'm going to have my piece of paper towel handy so that I can work in here. So my brush is only, you know, five mil and I'm going to work in and around this area. So I'm going to start with the white and then I'm just going to pop in a little buff and a little carnation. You're going to soon see, I mean, you're not going to get a perfect skin colour because there's no such thing as the perfect skin tone. There's way too many um, amazing skin tones and nationalities and everyone has different skin tones. So just trust what you think looks great. Um, if you're going to, you will probably colour over the top of some of the images and that's okay because we can go back over with a Stabilo pencil at the end and sharpen those um, features up and, and sharpen the hair as well. Um, so I'm just working in these in her face at the moment with these couple of tones and now I'm going to start adding some shading. So I've, I want some deepness in around under her eyes and up on this side here. So I'm going to do that with a bit of blushing. And she's meant to be animated. She's not gonna be the perfect skin tone, okay? And because the white underneath is still wet, I can move that around. And I'm just going to go in now with a bit of that deep fuchsia. Oh, Tina, you're going to create along at the same time. Ooh. I look forward to seeing that. So for those of you who are wanting to share and create along at home, I do have a, a Facebook group that I would love for you to join called uh, Classes with Natalie May, and that is for you to share your creativity, okay? It is where you can share your pages that you have. Um, you've seen me do here live on Facebook. Um, and get some inspiration for other bits and pieces. So that's enough for me. I mean, that works quite well. I'm quite happy with that. The more I play with it, I find the worse it gets. So walking away is important. All right. So you can see that the light is coming in this way and it is hitting her face that way. Um, now I need to do the same thing over here. 
I'm going to use a, a bigger brush because I've got a bigger area to cover. Rinse that brush off. And make sure that this one is clean before I use it. Let's wing it. So again, I'm going to start with the white and I've got a much bigger area to work on. Um, so I'm gonna go in with the white and the buff. And with this particular image, I have to add a lot more features. She's missing her, you know, this, this shape of the nose. So I know that I'm going to need to add a lot more in the features department. So I in with the carnation, which is more of a pale pink. And of course, it's a lot more artificial. And I'm being a little bit heavier with the paint because I'm working in a much bigger area and I want it to stay wet so that I can blend my colours a little bit better. So being a little bit more generous is going to give me that. And you'll notice I'm really keeping with those vertical strokes. There's no reason to change my strokes too much other than keeping with that vertical look. So now I've got blushing. And I am, I'm terrible at, at faces, but what I'm doing here is just trusting what my, my eye thinks it can see with the light. So I've got this invisible light coming in this way. So therefore this side of her nose needs to be just a little shadow to give her some shape. And I'm going to blend that back. Of course, um, I've got a lot going on here. I don't quite know what I was thinking. And I can go back and lighten it up if I need to. Give her a bit of a jawline. So now I'm going in with this fuchsia, which is a little bit scary, but the way to do it is nice and light. The paint underneath is still wet, which is enabling me to move it around a bit. She's a little dramatic. I'm really not too sure how to shade any more in and around the nose. Like I said, I'm no expert at this. I'm just making pretty things for myself. So more than happy to get some shading up there. It's called art, not perfection, and I'm all right with that. I'm going to go be a little bit game here and add some navy blue. Um, I think she needs a bit more drama. Actually, no one needs any more drama in their life. But, uh, oh, that's made a big difference. Because night is that really, that really lovely neutral tone, neutral blue. And again, someone's telling me when to stop because I'm bloody close. She needs some blue now, doesn't she? Not with that brush. Ooh, I nearly messed that up.
All right. I like it. Looks really good on camera. <laughs> Up close, it's slightly different. All righty. Um, I just want to add a bit of colour into her hair here. Of course, I should have blended that up before. So I'm going to dry brush that in now. And doing that with some yellow and orange is the smart thing because that's what I used before. So for those people who are new to art journaling and haven't worked in an art journal before, art journaling is a lot of different things to different people, okay? I create in an art journal to keep, for my own creativity. I, uh, a lot of people don't understand an art journal because it doesn't have photos in it and that's okay. It's certainly not for everybody. A lot of people can't see the purpose behind an art journal and I can respect that as well. I think you're weird, but I can respect that as well. But what I like about an art journal for me is that it allows me to try new techniques. It allows me to try something new and then turn the page. Um, and that is what I really, really love about creating in an art journal. I can see a technique online um, and, and go, you know what, I'm going to give that a go. Um, I, can, I can try something new and have a bit of a, a play with um, new products. I can, oh, that's better. I can, I can try new things. I can scrap lift a project i can create something again and again and again and practice new techniques that is the idea behind me personally having a an art journal um sorry i just have to jump up and do my uh apron up because i'm drowning in it here um okay so while that's drying the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to paint some leaves over the top uh, so I'm just going to bring that up to camera to give you some detail on how that looks close up. So it's pretty rough, but I'm all right with that. Like I said, it looks great on camera. So that works for me. I'm happy with that because it's my page. And then I just put my page straight into that paint, you know. That'll do. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to draw some big leaves on this page. I want to add a, a real pop of some green vines and leaves. And what, what that will do will cover up this background a little where it's a bit rough. Um, oh, just make sure I've got no paint. There we go. Thanks, girls. Popping some of these paints away so I can get the next lot out. Green. Green. Peacock. All right, so I want to use the Dina Wakeley Heavy Paints for these. So I've got a few different colours here. And before I start, I need to get my Stabilo pencil. So the Stabilo pencil is the big water soluble pencil. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to draw a couple of big leaves. Okay, so drawing a couple of big leaves isn't hard. 
One, two. Three, four, five, six. That are, they are the big key leaves that I want to do. The next thing I want to do is I want to work out where my vine is going to go. So my vine is going to follow here, down through there. I'm going to follow, follow the line of her head. And then it's going to go up over there. And I want to take a little vine through here, join it up. Something like that, okay? So that gives me my base on what I want to what I want to be doing. So before I do anything else, I want to start adding some color to my leaves. So when I'm painting my leaves, I'm going to use go back to my wide brush again and I'm going to use a decent amount of paint. Um, now because it is a water soluble pencil, I'm just going to stay away from my edges for the time being. Um, this green was a lot greener than what I had anticipated. I've forgotten how bright it looks when you put it on top of a con contrasting colour. Um, but that works. And now I'm going to work with a variety of blues and greens to create some strokes. And I'm following, I'm giving it shape by making my brush strokes go that way. So see what I mean? So just grabbing a bit of evergreen for depth. Now with this water soluble pencil, I'm just pushing it up to the side of it rather than going over the top of it. And I've got like, I've got heaps of paint on my brush, okay? Because I don't mind that it's a bit thicker, it's going to take a bit longer to dry and I don't mind that I don't mind that it um, is blotchy because leaves, again, are not perfect, are they? They are made up of lots of different colours. That one works. Right, let's whip through the next one. So I'm always going to start with my lightest colour and because the leaf goes this way, I'm following the direction of the leaf. To give it shape like that and it's just about using your common sense about if you if it's not moving maybe you don't have enough paint on your brush I'm using like a, a, a decent chunk of paint here I'm really adding that color and you can see that it's just sitting really nicely on top um and i'm just taking because i put so much paint on take it off on there that's okay do exactly the same thing how am i going for time all right i'm nearly in on an hour but what i will do just keep moving through, power through. Has anyone got anywhere else to be today? You're all good with me doing this? Give you a little freebie here. Uh, a bit more of that lovely turquoise or peacock, sorry. And this colour is covering up what's underneath, okay? So you can see that it's covering up that pink that's underneath and it's working quite well. I'm going to do my little baby leaves now. So I'm going to add the leaves on here 
to follow that line. So I need a different brush. Um, what am I going to use? What am I going to use? I'm going to go with a, a, a round brush this time. So add some more paint. And I'm going to start from this side and then I'm going to work over to that side of the page so that I don't run my arm through it. Um, all my leaves are going to be going one way. But they are nothing more than these little little domes, okay? Um, and I can... Mix a couple of colours together. Um, and I'm only going to use the colours that I used in here. And I'm not going to add the, um, the, the lines on yet, the stem, because I don't want to muddy it up too much. So even though there's no, whoops, no detail, the detail is going to come with the black pen. And it's going to come in the, the finishing off the page. Um, I can layer, I'm going to just, I'm going to add some more in here, but I just want this to dry off a bit more. <laughs> what are you doing there, Lou? Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Uh, Alright. Oh, are you liking the look of this one, Danny? Yeah, this one this one will take a little bit longer. So this is a bit more of a you know, I I've got another probably half an hour of of mucking around on here, but you kind of get the idea. Um, so building a background, collaging on our, our bits and pieces. And my leaves are super rough. You can see that my leaves are super rough. They don't really look like leaves, but they are a combination of those colors that we've used before. And the detail is gonna come with the detail is going to come with going back over the top of them and layering over the top of here as well, okay? So this is just using, for those of you who have just tuned in, um, I'm creating an art journal page in my large dilutions art journal using acrylic paints by Dina Wakeley and dilutions um, the page to start with I added the collage girls the faces here and here with gel medium um, I used some what did I do next added paint so we dry brushed the background um, which was is a really great technique and a really great technique for doing getting paint on quickly so we talked about the reason why we're doing vertical strokes so that it doesn't end up too much of a mishmash of color um, and now we've just drawn our big leaves on and I'm hand painting on some what are supposed to be vine leaves and even though they look a little messy what's going to happen in a minute is we're going to join them all together and add some add some detail with my Stabilo pencil and probably I think I might also use one of the Pintor paint pens to add some detail as well show you how amazing they work uh, my paint is quite thick where my leaves are and that's because I'm mixing these three colours together. So I may need to hit it with the heat gun in a moment. 
to speed up that drying time. And as you can see, these are being these are super rough leaves, but they're working. Concentrating up a storm here. So that's working, that's working. Um, that was a bold move, wasn't it? Just decapitated her. So using these collage papers is an excellent way to add faces to your page if you are not confident drawing faces like myself. I am, you know, you can't be good at everything, right? And I'm okay with that. Cooking, cleaning, wiping, mothering are also not in my top 10, but that's okay. Because like I said, you don't have to be good at everything. I'm just gonna come back up here now. And now that this paint up here is dried off a bit, get a little, colour in here, bit of overlap, alright, so it's a little rough but you kind of get the idea, I now want to take uh, a thinner paintbrush and add some paint on these lines. Now, because we've got that Stabilo pencil, um, I don't want to completely rub out the pencil. I quite like the pencil, but I just need to add some color down here. So a thinner brush is gonna help me with that. And I actually quite like the, the rougher it is, the car, the, the the better it is, the looser my hand is, the happier I am with what I end up. None of this is going to be perfect, and that is great for me. I understand it might not be for you, and I know that there's probably a lot of you sitting back in the corner rocking backwards and forwards, but that's okay. So the other thing that the Stabilo pencil does is it kind of, it sets over time. So what that means is that it will dry, it'll set on your page and become permanent. So it's also something that you can put on glass or um, chipboard or, or any sort of surface. and it's going to become permanent. So if I was going to water activate it, I would need to have done it straight away um, as soon as I used it. Alrighty. Ta-da. Alrighty, so quickly, I'm just gonna heat set that so that I can then get my, my pens and draw over the top. So just, you know, chat amongst yourselves. A 
And this is the boring bit. Because it has to be 100% dry before I can add my, my Pintor paint pen and the next layer, which gives the definition, okay? And because I've gone pretty heavy handed with the paint in certain spots, Nearly there. I know, it's like watching paint dry, isn't it? And it takes even longer when I know that there's like 50 of you watching. Because <laughs> that's a thing. Look, half of you are disappearing because you're sick of watching paint dry. I get that. All right, I'm just going to give that a second to cool down. So what I've got now is my the combination of Poskas from my stash and the Pentor paint pens. Um, what I want to do is add some detail to my leaves and, and some colour to, to give this a bit of definition because it's pretty loose at the moment. Um, so my green... a bit so just by by taking my my pen and loosely drawing to give myself some leaf shape is going to make it pop and definitely the key to this is is allowing yourself to be loose with your hand because you want something a little scribbly and loose okay um my i'm going to go back and do the the stem and i'll start adding um, a few little leafy bits here and there as well but what's happening is that the paint underneath is still there but these these lovely elements are now, now starting to pop through. Um, a little bit of pale blue can look great because we're the same sort of tones. So making them pop. And you can tone it down just by popping some paper towel or the palm of your hand on it. Um, this So that's the pastel blue and I've got a, a pastel green that will work. giving it a little shape and starting to create some leaf shapes as I go. 
So having all of these um, ready to go and changing between all of them. So the Pentor paint pens are sitting on the top and I can just lightly tone it back with my finger to create that leafy shape and give it a little bit of a pop. Um, I'm not gonna add too much Stabilo pencil in and around my, my lady faces because they um, I haven't gone over them too much with the uh with with paint so i haven't lost too much definition but if you were a bit heavy-handed with your paint you may need to go back over the top and and you know make some of these blacker areas black or um, she's lost a little bit of her nose here and i will sharpen that up but i think that this will work quite well um, but definitely this this loose drawing of your leaves is going to look great. Now this isn't the final color for, for my leaves. I'm going to also put some green back over these spots that I have done. And you can see how loose I'm being. I'm not making this perfect at all. In fact, I haven't even changed pens here. I've kind of just gotten a bit lazy and gone with, you know what, let's just go with that one at the moment. So today is the last day, of course, of the Great Australian Craft Show. And today is the last day of my online store sale, which means that today is the last day for you to catch a bargain. Uh, as a reward for you, I decided to celebrate you guys and say thank you. And all of the daily deals that I've had throughout the week, I have released to, again today for you. So that means 15% off of alcohol inks, 15% off of patterned paper, 15% off of Christmas items, 15% off kits, kits. Um, scrap effects is still 15% off, um, dun, dun, dun. stencils and stamps, which were much earlier on in the week. And dies, I have released those at 15% off as well, guys. So um, today is the last day for you to utilize those, those specials and get yourself a bargain. Now, I am. we will start packing orders tomorrow. So the special will go into tonight until I turn it off, until I decide to, to stop and, and you know, change it all online. But um, I would love for you to, to make the most of it and, and stock up on your stash, okay? The, um, if you have any questions, please just flick me a message. But don't forget, you can also use the no judgment postage. So if you have already done an order this weekend and paid for postage once, you don't need to pay for postage a second or third time you just need to select no judgment at the checkout. But just make sure that you have at least paid for postage one time. Postage is not free. It still costs me money. But I will look after you by putting all of your items together and then I will um, be shipping it out to you. Now there is also a bit of a weight limit as well if you have over five kilos, I will um, flick you a little message and say, look, do you think perhaps you could pop a couple of bucks my way and help out with that postage? But you kind of get the idea anyway. Um, okay, so 
you can see exactly what I'm doing here. It's just finalizing, you know, creating some of these lines, giving it a little bit of shape. I know what I need. I've got another green. see if this one wants to work for me which it never does all right there we go so um yeah your paint pens will add more definition here as well so um really really nice okay so you can kind of see where we're going here we're on the right track i'm going to take my stabilo pencil now and just draw in some of these some of these lines and make them a little deeper and stronger i wasn't going to but i'm going to now rather than watching paint dry Give her a bit more of a brow going on. Make the blacks blacker. But it's, you know, it, it doing this little bit also makes it look like that, you know, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe Natalie drew that. How clever is she? Not, but that's okay. That's the whole idea. You want it to look like it's something that you have drawn. Everybody knows that Dina Wakeley is the queen of doing these gorgeous faces, um, but I want to incorporate them into my journal by doing it like this. Um, all right, so we are on the right track here. We are looking pretty great. Uh, having a pencil sharpener handy for your stabilo also pays off. Keeping it nice and sharp. Um, I've just realized I've got my whites to below here so I can make my whites whiter and I love that my whites to below goes over all the surfaces and now I'm going to just finish off like this so I'm just going to finish off by adding a little bit of pencil over the top of my leaves and now it's tidying up these these messy leaves okay so um there we go okay what time did i start this let's have a look here been waffling on for an hour and eight. Oh, look i've got plenty of time louise is busy packing orders um and if i'm doing this it means i don't have to help her <laughs> So there's a couple of different designs with this tissue paper as well of the of the Dina Wakeley faces um, and they look fantastic so there's some smaller ones that can go in your small journal so these are some of the ones that might look great in your smaller dilutions journal or your scrap effects junk journal um, but I really like mixing them up a bit using a combination of both on my projects so So what I'll do in a moment is um, take a photo and show you up close how this looks because I'm sure the camera is not doing it justice but you get the idea. Um, okay so I'm just going to finish off now. Uh, I've just about finished adding, adding these bits and pieces in. Um, I will put a photo of my, my finished project. I see that you're all losing interest and, and, and heading off camera. So that's okay. Um, it's been a long time. And I need to add some, some writing as well. So, because an art journal page really isn't anything without some sort of journaling on it. So taking a, a quote and adding a quote How will I add a quote? Let me have a bit of a think. If somebody want to pop a pop a quote in here that I could pop on, any ideas while I think of something? Hey, 
Pop a quote to quote. Pop a quote to quote. Feed the mind. Oh, that's a good one. All right. I like that one, actually. <coughs> and I know exactly where I'm going to write it. So I'm just using my Stabilo and I'm going to write up here. Oh, God, it's too sharp. Hang on. Paint is only wasted if you don't open the chute. Oh, I like that one too. There we go. Oh, Wendy, you've just put Jesso down on your first ever page. Good on you, love. Well done indeed. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up to camera just to give you a bit of an idea and show you some of these details. Okay, so you can just see I've written there, feed your mind. But you can see that the leaves now have a little bit of a pop. They've got a bit of definish, definition instead of just blobs of paint on the page and see how it's all come together. So I'll take a quick photo and pop that up for you guys to see. But I'm really quite liking that. It's worked out quite well, and it's totally different to the other page that I've done. Um, and it's, and you know, it, it looks great in my journal. So thank you very much to everybody for joining in. Um, you can find more, you can get online classes and join online classes um, through my webpage, nataliemay.com.au. And there are lots of art journal classes there that I have taught previously that you can jump in and do at your own speed and be part of a Facebook group, which is fantastic, so that you can watch them back at any time. You can also take advantage of all of the um, things on special as well. So 15% off, lots of different items, which ends today. So I will link uh, a photo, I'll take a photo and pop a link in the comments of the products that we have used today and, um, and go from there. But I will be back this afternoon at about 3.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time and I'm going to do a scrapbook page. So thanks guys for watching and I look forward to chatting, you, chatting with all of you again soon, all of you again soon. Um, Wash your hands, kiss your kids, chat soon.